All right, so in this next phase, I'm taking the photo, a duplicate of my reference photo, and I'm moving it behind my sketch. And in this case, I'm gonna take the opacity down on the, the photo a little bit so I can see my sketch more clearly. And then I'm gonna control T, right click, start warping that photo. No, I'm sorry, that's not, I've already done that. <laughs> I'm gonna start warping my sketch. So I go to my sketch line. I can do this on a duplicate if, if I wanna be careful. And then do control T. And I'm gonna warp my sketch to fit. And I can push and pull it in different ways. but it's gonna help me see what I observed correctly, like the placement of the paws, and what I maybe didn't get as right, like how long that tail is, and how curved that back is, which I might take down a little bit. So I kinda of like the elegance of that curve better. Animals are a little bit more forgiving than doing portraits of people, right? So when you're doing portraits of people, you wanna pay attention to the spacing between the eyes, which is usually equal to one of their eye widths if you're going for reality, that the nose is about halfway down from the eye line to the bottom of the chin, and then the space of the upper lip can vary a lot because people's teeth, their upper teeth size can vary a lot. But usually the mouth is floating near the middle of between the eye line or the nose line and the bottom of the chin, and then what the upper lip looks like, what the bottom lip looks like, all of that, the shapes of the hair, all of that. So now I'm going to hit return and I have that sketch. And maybe I'll move that over a little bit just to give me some room. And do I like that sketch better to work with or do I like this one? And I got to say this one that is a little bit better. And then the reference, do I want the reference that matches the old sketch or do I want the reference that matches that and maybe I want the the reference that matches the old sketch and now I control T that and again this is all just trying to not be a slave to one photo remember this is the sketch that I altered to match the unaltered photo it was just tilted but now I'm altering the photo again to better match that altered sketch and I can see one thing that's a little off. Oh, it's not too bad, but it's that leg, right? So now I'm gonna continue that sketched and I'm gonna sketch on top of what I have here. So as I continue my sketch, I am actually drawing on a layer right on top of the photo. And when you do that, that is called rotoscoping. It's not the same as tracing, but it's also not the same as painting or drawing, right? You're taking things from an underlying source. And some people do this way too much in digital painting and it limits their work. Even so much so, I'll show you that on a new layer, I'll turn off my sketch. Doing it in this way, you could simply steal colors directly from it. Like I'll start with the eye and start painting on a new, new layer. Oh, I gotta rasterize it first. I'll do this on a new layer. So I'm just gonna steal color. So I don't need to rasterize it, I just need to be on a new layer. And then I'm just painting with the stolen color at 70% opacity. And this can be a way to start what's called a base color for your painting. You're just using option and stealing the local color that's there. And especially if you're new to painting, this isn't a bad way to go, but it has extreme limitations. 
So let me show you what I've got so far. I've got that, right? So the problem with just doing it that way is you get no sense of the proportion or the edge of things, of harder shapes versus softer shapes. Instead, you're just kind of doing what I used to do in coloring books that had ink, ink dots already embedded in them. And you take a wet brush and you just kind of fill in the colors. So it's like a paint by number. But you lose a lot of your creative expression that way. And it's just not even going to look as good as the photo. But this is the basic idea for the next type of sketching in digital painting, which isn't line-based, it's shape-based. And this is what I call speed painting. So instead of doing it right on top, this is what I generally do when I do speed painting. I look at the reference. This is all just in the sketch phase still. We'll get to more refined paint next class. But I'm going to use my brush, I'm going to use it at 100%, and I'm going to make that brush big. And we're going to learn more about kind of customizing our brush. We can even, let's see, define a new brush and create our own, and we'll learn that next class. But right now I'm just going to use a really big brush, and I'm going to steal colors right from my reference just by holding down what key? Not I. It's for the eyedropper tool, but just option. Option will change my brush to the eyedropper. Just enough time to steal some color. Right? So if I want to steal like that, that brown on its chest, right? So how do I do this? I'm going to find kind of a base color. I'm just going to... Sometimes in painting, especially oil painting, this is called scumbling. I'm just going to kind of scribble it in the shape I think it's taking. And then I might steal a lighter tone, scumble that in. Ooh. <laughs> And slowly but surely, you will develop your approach to painting this, right? And you can do the same sort of things with your shape painting that we were doing with the line sketch. You can use the photo, you can use reference, and kind of warp and transform it. But this gets you more focused on kind of the color blocking that's going to be the next step. Because I'm using it at 100%. I don't want any kind of faint paint. Everything I paint is replacing other pixels. And the whole point is to get rid of all the white in your base painting. So once I have a useful color, this kind of sets that pattern. Now these are based just on the photo. What if I wanted to steal some of these more interesting colors and throw those in as well? You got these bright blue eyes. You got the black dot in the eye. <laughs> and you start to see how slowly but surely you develop it. So just a few more minutes of this, and then I don't want to forget the tail, which kind of comes out this way. I might need more space for all of this, so remember at any time you can just move your strokes, move it on over. And there's no wrong way to digitally paint. You just want to start building up layers and information that is useful to you. Sometimes it's easier to see what's right. So you try a lot of things and then deduce from there. Stealing lots of colors with that option key. Oh, 
or are you getting a sense of lighting direction? Thinking, what am I doing to this poor cat? But all paintings have to start with a rough sketch, whether it's shape-based or line-based. All right, so once you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and save my work. So I have that approach. I have the linear sketched approach. I might be able to use them both. Potentially top two sketch, whatever. And then you use lower opacity, more refined brushes to refine it as you go on top. So with my shape paint layer, which I am kind of getting partial to, <laughs> uh, and my, my different linear sketches, I'm starting to get to where I can build up on this. And, and I'm recognizing through my reference what things still need work. You know that my tendency is to make the back not large enough. My tendency is to kind of shrink the head. I'm noticing now how straight that line is under that ear, so I can continue that with one of these lighter colors. It's kind of how that goes all the way down. But all of that can get refined on top of what I'm working with. So this is the next st stage before we can start like real painting. It's getting rid of all the, the white underneath, right? So that when you turn off the background, or if in the next stage I'm going to duplicate the blank white and fill it with middle gray, just like we did for our spot illustrations and for our type, this will help me see if there's anything I missed. Right? And now I start the real painting on top of this layer, which will be next time. You don't want to accidentally paint in the wrong layer, which I just did. So I can simplify some of the files as well. Okay. Remember, just hold down Option. You can steal colors. And I'm already starting to establish a palette for this work. And sometimes you'll even just go ahead and put that palette off to the side as well. So if there's certain colors you think are really useful, you can just paint them off in the corner. You think relate well to what you're going for. And I try not to use solid black or, or pure white. I always try to use variations. So that's kind of the palette I'm working with right now with a few outliers, which are always fun these extremes, the oranges, the reds, the yellows. And I can always push those further. Okay, to be continued. It's so fun. Maybe get some purple in there as a dark variation. <laughs> 